Hi, welcome back to Add to Your Service and this is lesson number 10. These are the low flow oxygen devices. So as we have mentioned in the previous video, we talk about air entrainment and we said that the process by which an oxygen device can deliver an FiO2 less than 100% is because of dilution from the environmental air. So let's have a review of the different low flow oxygen devices. And I'm pretty sure you are very familiar with these devices because you often see them in the television, especially if you're fond of watching K-dramas or, well, medical dramas. Uh, most patients in acute um, respiratory distress are given oxygen using low flow devices. Anyway, these devices were called low flow because they do not meet all of the patient's flow requirements. That is the reason that they are named as low flow. It, um, being a low flow device doesn't mean that you are using a low flow rate using your flow meter. It doesn't mean that when you say low flow, you're giving two liters per minute. And once you dial the flow meter to 15 liters per minute, it becomes a high flow. No, it doesn't. The reason, again, I have to stress that the reason they are called low flow is because they deliver a flow or a flow rate less than a patient's flow requirements. It's also said that low flow devices deliver a variable FiO2 or a variable percentage of oxygen. Actually, it's difficult to predict the exact FiO2 that these devices can give because the performance of these devices can be affected by the patient's respiratory rate or the patient's breathing pattern or, the, or even the depth of the patient's breathing. So specifically, Low flow devices include our nasal cannula, the simple mask, and both the rebreathing masks. The non-rebreathing mask is still considered as a low flow device. Okay, so for the first device, the most common, your nasal cannula, this is often administered with one to six liters per minute. And by using the formula for conversion from liters per minute to FiO2, the approximate FiO2 is between 24% to 44%. Again, I am stressing that this is just approximation because there is no way that you can exactly measure the FiO2 of a nasal cannula. And as I've mentioned in a previous video, nasal cannulas do not require humidification unless it is above 4 liters per minute or if you are using the nasal cannula for a long period of time. For example, the patient requires oxygen for more than 12 hours. The next device is your simple oxygen mask or sometimes called face mask. The simple oxygen mask must be used at a minimum of 6 liters per minute to wash out the exhaled carbon dioxide. Can we use the simple oxygen mask above 10 liters per minute? Well, the answer to this is you can. You can use more than 10 liters per minute. But a more appropriate question is, should you even use a simple oxygen mask more than 10 liters per minute? Now, if you think about it, since the oxygen mask was designed um, originally to deliver 6 to 10 liters per minute of oxygen, should the patient require a higher flow rate, for example, 12 liters per minute or 15 liters per minute, why would you insist on using a simple oxygen mask, right? So you, you have to switch the patient to a different device. Anyway, the FiO2 that you see here, 35% to 50%, is again just an approximation. Um, another thing to remember when you are using a simple oxygen mask is you always uh, connect this device to a humidifier, like a bubbler humidifier. Why? Because oxygen at this flow rate would cause dryness to the patient's upper airways and the patient will complain about airway irritation. Anyhow, can you use a simple oxygen mask for a prolonged period of time? Well, the answer is no. Instead of leaving the oxygen mask for a prolonged period of time, it is better to investigate why is the patient desaturating or why is the patient experiencing hypoxemia in the first place. After identifying the cause of the hypoxemia or desaturation, then apply the necessary therapy. Okay, so now let's go to our rebreathing mask. And you know that there are two types of rebreathing mask, your partial and non-rebreathing mask. The flow rate and the delivered FiO2 are the same for both devices, but 
The difference is the presence of this one, of these of these um, one-way valves. Another breathing mask has three one-way valves or has three unidirectional valves. So two on the side of the mask and one between the reservoir and the oxygen mask. For partially breathing, at least one of the entrainment port is not covered or doesn't have a one-way valve. So in this illustration, we have one. One entrainment port without a valve and the other with a valve. Sometimes you will see a rebreathing mask with only one um, one-way valve. That's the that's the thing that's the valve between the mask and the reservoir. And uh, similarly to your um, nasal cannula, do not place or do not connect a rebreathing mask to a humidifier, even if it's a partial rebreathing mask on a, or a non-rebreathing mask. Because the minimum flow rate for a rebreathing mask is 10 liters per minute, if you try to connect a bubbler humidifier at 10 liters per minute, you will observe or you will see that the water will um, come out of the bubbler and reach your oxygen tubing and this water might reach the reservoir bag and what is the effect of water in your tubing or in your reservoir bag is is that it decreases the FiO2 it displaces the oxygen inside the tubing or inside the bag another reason why it doesn't need humidification is because we don't really place a patient to rebreathing mask for a prolonged period of time in the first place you are placing a patient in a rebreathing mask because of severe desaturation or for a severe hypoxemia that you cannot yet rule out the cause. You don't know yet the etiology of the hypoxemia, but exposing a patient to a high flow rate of oxygen for a long period of time causes some problems. A patient requiring a rebreathing mask is actually in need of more aggressive management. Perhaps the patient is suffering from um, cardiac overload or the patient is suffering from bronchoconstriction or the patient might need non-invasive ventilation or sometimes even invasive ventilation. Low flow devices as you can see here like their breathing mask can deliver as high as 90% of FiO2 but still considered as a low flow. The reason why they're called low flow is because they do not meet all of the patient's requirements or all of the patient's flow requirements. Uh, one last thing about rebreathing mask is that when you're using this, make sure that during inspiration, the reserva bag should be not fully deflated. It can be partially deflated. That's normal. Of course, when the patient uh, when the patient breathes, the bag will move. That is normal as long as the bag doesn't completely collapse. In any case that the reserva bag collapses during inspiration, what you need to do is simply increase the flow. Okay, so that's the end of this video. That is lesson number 10, low flow oxygen devices. And uh, thank you for watching. And the next video would be about high flow oxygen devices. See ya.